Hi, this is Salman Alana in Manos Brilakis, and this is case 149 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is the story of a truly resistant lesion. The patient was an elderly woman who presented with medically refractory angina. She had previous coronary bypass graft surgery and had also undergone PCI of the left main and the proximal circumflex with a stent that was underexpanded and could not be expanded at the time of the procedure. She does have a left dominant system. We can see that the left PDA is being supplied by the left main, as do the first and second obtuse marginal branch, as well as the proximal LAD. She did have a patent saphenous vein graft to the obtuse marginal, and she also had a patent lima to LAD. So actually, the patient was recommended to continue with medical therapy under the assumption of the lima and the SVG2M supplying adequate perfusion to the anterior wall and the lateral wall, respectively. However, upon further review of the angiogram, it appeared that a large myocardial territory, the anterior wall, the first and second obtuse marginal, and the left PDA, were all being supplied by the left main, which had a significant lesion. That is why we decided to offer here percutaneous coronary intervention. We went for fe with femoral access, seven friends EBU 375 guide, and was able to wire with difficulty with a Minamo guide wire. This is the baseline EKG and the baseline blood pressure, which will become relevant as the case progresses. We were optimistic about this case, so actually we advanced a Viper flex tip wire with a plan to proceed with primary orbital atherectomy since we knew that the proximal circumflex stent was um, underexpanded. However, we had significant difficulty and could not deliver the atherectomy crown. So we have a balloon or I should say more accurately, an orbital atherectomy and crossable lesion. What is the first thing to do is to try with a small balloon. This was a Sapphire 1.0 by 15. However, this could not be delivered into the LED. This is the algorithm. The next step is to rupture the balloon. The third step is to increase support with the guide extension or other means. Use a different microcatheter or the Carlino technique. Use the wire cutting technique or use laser, atherectomy or extra plaque techniques. In this case, we actually had a worse flow after we tried the orbital atherectomy. And then, despite attempts to advance a standard guide wire, a Minamo and a Sion Blue were unable to advance a guide wire, possibly because of some disruption of the plaque from the orbital atherectomy crown. We had some chest discomfort, and also there was ST segment depression, although the patient maintained her blood pressure. We gave atropine that um, improved uh, the bradycardia. However, the patient continued to have EKG changes. The subfire balloon would not go, and uh, we tried a guide extension that did not work. We tried actually also another microcatheter, turnpike LP, as well as a fine cross. Nothing would cross. So eventually we decided to go with a laser that can go over any guide wire. This is the 0.9 millimeter coronary laser that we activated at 80 energy and 80 influency. The laser did not cross the left main. However, we know that sometimes, even though it does not cross, it may modify enough the plaque to allow subsequent crossing with the balloon. The other thing we saw here is that the flow improved after laser into the uh, left main, and that actually helped with uh, improvement of the ST segment depression on the EKG. Unfortunately, the subfire balloon, which is our go-to for this uh, uncrossable lesion, still would not be delivered. It looks like the tip of the balloon is likely catching on a shelf or the plaque and cannot be delivered. Fortunately, uh, we were able, after a lot of effort, to advance a threader balloon, a threader monorail balloon, which finally took the band and went into the left main. And this was a technique that uh, made the big difference, the independent hand technique. The left hand is pushing the guide that is providing strong support for the right hand to advance the balloon. And that, I think, was critical for the successful delivery of the threader balloon into the left main. After the threader, then the subfire could also be delivered into the left main. 
and then it ruptured, but then we were able to advance a 2.0 millimeter balloon. And now we had uh, the opportunity to balloon the left main. We tried with uh, a 3.0 balloon that had difficulty expanding. And this is the algorithm for balloon and dilatable lesions, which we knew that this lesion was going to be. We start with high pressure balloon inflation, so we can use a plaque modification balloon, intravascular lithotripsy, the very high pressure balloon, SISOPN, laser, atherectomy, or extra plaque lesion crossing. So in this case, we um, had already the orbital atherectomy on the table, so we decided to start with orbital atherectomy. We were able to use uh, the glide assist function to advance uh, the crown into the left main and then do backwards uh, um, ablation, but then we also did forward ablation as well. So we did multiple runs with orbital atherectomy. There was um, an audible change on the pitch of the sound that improved as the case progressed. And this is how the lesion looked after orbital atherectomy. We still see that the previously placed end appears to be underexpanded. And this is now with an NC balloon. There seems to be a little better expansion, but still there is a waste in the middle of the balloon. So we performed intravascular ultrasound to determine the situation, and uh, there was significant calcification in an area of underexpansion. Actually, the ivus catheter jumped in the middle of the lesion, couldn't get really good images. We used a plaque modification balloon, the Scoreflex 3.5 millimeters, that seemed to expand a little bit better, but still there was a slight waste. So we changed to uh, intravascular lithotripsy with a 3.5 millimeter balloon for atmosphere inflation and gave 80 pulses into the left main. That uh, uh, improved the stenosis and then eventually we placed a 3.5 by 18 millimeter drug eluting stent that seemed to expand well upon deployment. However, the patient after the stent was deployed started having significant chest pain again and now she was having ST segment depressions that were worse than what we saw in the beginning. Here are the images, the left main seems to be okay. However, the flow in the lady seems to have subsequently decreased. And uh, this is the intravascular ultrasound and that shows much better expansion of the left main. Now the minimum lumen area was actually eight millimeters square. So significant improvement compared with before. What is the culprit? Um, we thought initially whether it could be some issue in the PDA, the left PDA, but in the end, uh, we thought that it was the LAD, the culprit. We did have, fortunately, a jailed wire that was a Sion Black into the LAD. We were able to rewire with the Sion Blue, perform multiple inflations with a 2.0 millimeter balloon, and that uh, restored Timothy flow into the LAD. And again, better flow as can be seen on the cranial projection as well. This is uh, what gave the solution. The patient says this comfort resolved and then the EKG changes resolved as well. And this was the final result. It is not perfect expansion, but we do have a good, much better area in the left main. We do have good flow into the LED. There are many lessons uh, from this particular case. The first one is that uh, it is always possible to underestimate the complexity and the difficulty of recanalizing lesions. We initially thought it was going to be an easy solution with atherectomy or intravascular lithotripsy. However, it ended up being a very complex case, being both balloon uncrossable and balloon undilatable. In this uh, patient, the cause of chest pain um, was um, uh, misinterpreted. It was not... Uh, uh, coming from small vessel disease. Instead, the problem was that she had a significant disease in the left main, and despite having bypasses in the LAD in the obtuse marginal, the bypasses were not providing adequate perfusion to the proximal LAD, first and second OM, and the left PDA. What uh, helped us be successful in this case was a systematic algorithmic approach using step-by-step -step, uh, different techniques to both cross the lesion as well as dilate it, being persistent. And then uh, an unexpected uh, extra difficulty was the EKG changes that the patient developed after we placed the stent. It turned out that the culprit was pinching the LAD and decreasing the flow into the LAD. 
So very important when there are new unexplained EKG changes to go through a systematic approach and find what those changes are and try to correct them before the patient goes to the floor. So balloon uncrossable, balloon undilatable, systematic step-by-step -step approach can be the key to success. Thank you.